Whether it's the Frost Troll on the way to High Frothgar, or Solstheim's ghastly Frost Giant, Karstag, every Skyrim player has vivid memories of their battles against the many dangerous monsters, creatures, and otherworldly beings that inhabit our favourite snowy province. However, there is one foe that may not stand out for players in particular, but would for many of Skyrim's Nord inhabitants who do not possess dragon blood and the gifts that come with it. For Era's young Nord men of the old holds would venture into the high peaks in the dead of winter, hunting a certain mythical beast for weeks. Slaying one of them would give the Nord claim to full status as a citizen of Skyrim, introducing one of the most mysterious entities in the game, the Ice Wraith. In more recent years, heading into the freezing wilderness to kill one of these ethereal apparitions seems to have changed to an initiation rite performed by those aspiring to join the Stormcloaks, a watered down remnant of times gone by when the Nordic people were more traditionally inclined. Nevertheless, ice wraiths still haunt the most freezing areas of the province, and to this day their origins remain unknown. But that has not stopped academics and adventurers of the Elder Scrolls universe from making theories and assumptions about them. Today on Fudge Muppet, I plan to cover the most plausible possibilities behind the true nature of ice wraiths, crafting multiple theories and diving into lore topics that I think most people haven't considered in relation to these beings. The first image that comes to mind when most people hear the word Wraith is one of Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion's ghastly undead sharing the same name. This has led some to believe that Ice Wraiths are some sort of spirit that has taken on a serpentine form instead of departing to the afterlife. Perhaps like a ghost or wraith, it is a spirit with unfinished business. Check the pinned comment for my recent video on Ethereal Undead. The other assumption is that ice wraiths are physical manifestations of the element they represent, in this case frost, and have been animated through natural magics arising out of Nern. This concept comes from a text on Wisp Mothers that mentions a synod mage who believes Wisp Mothers are elemental personifications of snow or mist who innately wield their powers versus manipulating magic through conventional sorcery. She is said to back this up by noting several similarities that Wisp Mothers share with Spriggans and Ice Wraiths. However, even if grouping beings like Spriggans and Ice Wraiths together is accepted by some other scholars, this does not necessarily mean it is true. No further texts with details on Ice Wraiths seem to exist outside of one titled Herbane's Bestry, The Ice Wraiths. Just keep in mind that the author's Bestry series is more a collection of embellished, boastful stories that lean on his observation and assumptions and lack the sort of analytical depth that you'd expect from a proper Bestry. He refers to Ice Wraiths as both lucid serpentine creatures of magic, as if conjured from the frozen tundra and glaciers of Skyrim itself, as well as ethereal apparitions, who are the death of many Nords. The first description sounds like it supports the magical personification of the elements idea, while ethereal apparitions sounds more like what you'd call a ghost or other spirit-based undead. So what on Nern is an Ice Wraith, really? Outside of being called a wraith, having a somewhat translucent appearance, and being referred to as ethereal apparitions, what else do ice wraiths have in common with undead? Well, ghosts tend to have resistance to frost, and ice wraiths do too, but that could easily be because they are an ice-based creature. Ice wraiths are also weak to fire, which lines up with that idea. When ghosts perish, they leave behind a gooey substance called ectoplasm, which has various alchemical uses and can even be crafted into a cold material that can provide protection against heat. Ice wraiths also leave behind an essence of their own and freezing ethereal teeth which can be used to craft potions or simply keep food supplies cold. Again, there's a good chance this is just an ice creature trait. Same goes for delivering frost damage as part of their attacks, which ghosts often do. Although to be fair, ice wraith strikes are said to see them cast their entire body through their opponent, which is usually only possible for spirit-based beings. Then again, that could mean they literally just pass through you with their ice jamming into your flesh and out the other side like a spear. They can also afflict those who survive battle with them with a disease, Whitbane, an infection said to dull the intellect and make the target even more the victim. Diseases being transferred by spirits like ghosts is rare, but it has been seen before in an instance in Morrowind, and other undead like zombies for example frequently carry disease. What I think is more illuminating is that ice wraiths are often found in places of significance or near skeletons. Sure, they're found in all the typical snowy regions of Skyrim and even in the Elder Scrolls Online in Hrothgar and Northern Cyrodiil, but I think we should be taking a good look at Skyrim's in-game scripted ice wraiths and not just those that get switched out with other leveled creatures like snow bears. 
There are multiple instances in the base game, such as in Bone Chill Passage, where an ice wraith is found around skeletons. Perhaps it was formed from one of their spirits, maybe even interacting with the ice of the area somehow, or maybe the wraith just stays here to kill explorers. We don't know for sure, however if we head to the Dawnguard DLC's Forgotten Veil, we will discover one of the coolest showcases of ice wraiths in the game. Here the Dragonborn can encounter multiple dead skeletons along the frozen riverbank, likely dead snow elves from ancient ancient times who perished on their pilgrimage to the five way shrines of Oriel. The perfect subjects to have unfinished business that was extremely important to them in life, wouldn't you agree? Well ice wraiths here can be seen to lay in wait under the snow near where the dead bodies are. Watch as the first one emerges right next to the skeleton and his belongings. Ice wraiths could be intelligent enough to stay there on purpose to ambush adventurers looking to loot, but what if it's actually protecting the skeleton for some reason? Perhaps because the spirit from that skeleton has actually joined forces with natural ice magics and formed this ice wraith in the process. If true, this would make ice wraiths some sort of pseudo-undead elemental being, a combination of both schools of thought regarding their true nature. Things get even more interesting as we move along the river to another dead skeleton. This one is nestled up a little pathway, surely out of sight for most adventurers, and not at all a spot for a reliable source of prey for any cunning ice wraith, if killing a looter is even what it desires anyway. Watch closely what happens next. As we move carefully towards the skeletal corpse, the ice wraith seems to spring up from directly underneath it to attack. It will not attack you if you walk past the entrance, only if you come right up to the skeleton. The bones of the skeleton even rattle and move as the ice wraith pops up from out of it. This situation may not confirm a 100% myth busted status of undead involvement, but I think it's a significant clue and we've got to admit it does really look like this ice wraith has something to do with the skeleton it rises out of. If the spirits of the fallen are involved, ice wraiths could result from any dead Nord out in the snow. Skyrim has seen its fair share of bloodshed over the errors, and many have perished in its harsher regions. That said, the possibility of it having something to do with snow elf spirits specifically intrigues me. By their very nature, the Falma, prior to their corruption, are very clearly related to the snow. They are said to have been immune to the cold and could live comfortably in ice caverns. It wouldn't surprise me if a brutally murdered snow elf, such as those around northern Skyrim who fought against or fled from the carnage of the returning 500 companions from Atmora, could become angry ice spirits of sorts. The circumstances of many snow elves' deaths at the hands of the Nords would be ideal to create spirits unable to leave Nern due to both the brutal nature of their deaths and their feelings of having unfinished business. After all, the growth of their civilization was completely crushed, and even their personal lives would have met an unexpected and abrupt end. Again, if we assume the skeletons laying by the ice wraiths found in the Forgotten Vale were Snow Elf followers of Oriel specifically, then it aligns with the concept of spirits being unable to pass on when they had tasks extremely important to them unfinished. I also find it interesting that in one of the texts mentioned earlier, Wisp Mothers were referred to as elemental personifications that occur naturally, with the supporting evidence being that they share traits with Ice Wraiths. Well, if Wisp Mothers are actually similar to Ice Wraiths, this could further strengthen the theory that Ice Wraiths are undead, at least partially, and maybe even strengthen the theory that they come from fallen snow elves specifically. You see, Wisp Mothers are actually affected by the turn undead spell. Ice Wraiths may not be, but that does not mean no spiritual energy or essence from a fallen mortal is involved in their creation. It could simply be that they are mostly made up of the magical energy within Nern that gives life to various entities and only need part of a lingering spirit's essence to form. Master Sadran Serethi, an academic with extensive research into necromancy and Cyrodiil's alien culture, is also mentioned in this Wisp Mother text. His expertise has actually led him to posit that Wisp Mothers exist in a necrological state, a type of lichdom developed by a now forgotten first era culture. Hmm, what now forgotten first era culture could that be? Sounds like the snow elves to me. That's right, the other theory about wisp mothers is that they actually originate from snow elf women. 
It could be an intentionally achieved state of lichdom, as some speculate, or they could form similarly to ghosts. Just like ice wraiths, wisp mothers have an affinity for frost magic and a weakness to fire, and are found in many areas of Skyrim where snow elves could have died. It is not uncommon for wisp mothers in particular to be found in places where the snow elves were betrayed, a common cause behind ghost-like entities creation by the Dwemer. With the rich history of Snow Elves in Skyrim, and their demise at the hands of the Nords and corruption at the hands of the Dwemer, I would not be surprised if Wisp Mothers and Ice Wraiths, beings that are said to share similarities, both have a mix of spiritual and elemental influences. Diving deeper, one may also want to keep in mind that water on Tamriel is literally composed of the memories of those now dead. It is a tightly guarded secret and considered dangerous knowledge unknown to most mortals who have ever lived. Well, if ice is just frozen water, one could speculate that instead of spiritual essence, ice wraiths may contain the memories of the fallen, perhaps those who met a rather gruesome fate involving slaughter or betrayal. When it comes to ice wraiths, the average inhabitant of Skyrim would probably consider them close enough to spirits that they'd see no difference. I'd love to hear what you think about that in the comments, but we must also consider strongly the idea that they might not be undead in any way at all. Certain creatures in the Elder Scrolls universe are thought to be derived from the original spirits who did not flee to Aetherius during the creation of Mundus and sacrificed themselves to form the laws of nature, becoming the Earth Bones. It is thought that Spriggans are among such creatures, and as discussed, some think Wisp Mothers are too. One example that is clear is that of Nereids. Similar to Wisp Mothers, these feminine beings take on somewhat of an elven appearance. They are attuned to nature and have an innate connection to whichever body of water they inhabit. Habit. They protect their homes at all costs, and can literally be corrupted and harmed if the water they protect becomes tainted. Ice wraiths may also be a kind of spirit of their habitat, an extension of the harsh, dangerous climates they are birthed from. This would be represented through their unrelentingly vicious behavior and, of course, their appearance. Ice wraiths are scripted to be found in a small handful of other unique areas in Skyrim. Some seem to be the result of mages getting up to their usual business, such as an ice wraith in the Midden or in Shalador's Maze. Others we mentioned are found near skeletons in icy territories. However, there are more set locations out in the open expanse of Skyrim that show there may be more to these beings than we've discussed so far. The most significant is Serpent Stone Isle, where Galmar Stonefist sends you to kill an ice wraith when you ask to join the Stormcloaks. He calls it a strange rock formation built by the ancients, noting that something about that place attracts the ice wraiths. Heading to this freezing landmark and venturing towards the Serpent Stone will have the Ice Wraith spot you and attack. Is it a coincidence that an Ice Wraith, being an icy spirit-like being taking on a serpentine form, is guarding the Serpent Stone? Could it somehow be connected to ancient magic here, even possessing connections to an ancient Nordic god known as Orki? Orki is the death god of the Nords. He is an enemy of theirs who is represented by a snake and is considered a testing god. Ice Wraiths, who are drawn to the Serpent Stone, possess a serpent form and for ages have served as a test for true Nords to overcome, could absolutely have something to do with this snake god. Old stories of Orki involved deception and trickery, which brought misery upon the Nords, and he was said to have reduced their lifespan to six years until Shaw saved the day and mostly removed the curse. Funnily enough, Ice Wraiths do often seem to ambush unsuspecting adventurers, hiding near places or bodies with loot and potentially tricking any opportunistic looters into a shortened lifespan, effective immediately. Perhaps Ice Wraiths are manifestations of Orki's will in Skyrim's freezing environment. Another area where two Ice Wraiths can be found is at the Wainan Stones. Similarly to Serpent Stone Isle, this location features rock formations built by the Ancients. The two Ice Wraiths reveal themselves together near the statue of Talos built there, which as a side note does seem to show that cooperation is possible between these entities. We've all seen statues of Talos many times in Skyrim, standing victorious with his sword pointing down towards this serpent-like being that he has overcome. It's not explicitly said what this serpent being beneath Talos is. If Orki is culturally considered a testing god, perhaps this is where the idea came from, even if modern day Nords don't really think about it when constructing the shrines. Alternatively, it could just be representative of Alduin, or the Nords, post-imperial religious dominance, simply thought that it looked really cool. 
Regardless of the statue, it is interesting that these ethereal ice serpents were drawn towards the area. Are ice wraiths elemental manifestations of Skyrim's frozen lands, guarding places of cultural and natural significance, or smart creatures that hang around waiting for opportunities to ambush, in this case targeting those coming to worship? If they are partially comprised of undead influence, they could even be bitter snow elf spirits wanting revenge upon the Nords, especially those who devoutly worship Talos, a man who slaughtered many elves across Tamriel long after Isgrimor and his companions did. Ice wraiths are often overlooked, but after investigating them more, they've quickly become one of my favorite enemies to encounter simply because of all the theories and mystery surrounding their origin. What do they want and how were they formed? We may never know for sure, but many of the theories we've explored are quite convincing. But let me know your favorite theory in the comments below. Social media links can be found in the description, and videos you should definitely check out are pinned in the comments. If you want to help grow this channel, please do consider liking the video if you enjoyed it, or supporting us on Patreon using the link in the description. It really goes a long way. My name is Michael, thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.